this machine, I it's been uh, in my community for 30 years, if maybe, if maybe more. Uh, it was bought at a originally bought at a Canex. They called it. Uh, it was a, a store on the military base that sold them, and uh, the owners had it for years and years and years. And I found it, restored it, and uh, it's supposedly from Sweden. It's uh, not a very inexpensive machine by any means. It's like about a $600 machine or a $600 or a $700 machine at the time. Okay, so it wasn't bought by the military. No, no, it was sold by the military store. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. There was three of them sold. So they had like a... And the, and the reason they were bought is more because of the price. Okay. <laughs> the day, you know, like, uh, it's like buying a, a cheap quad at Princess Auto or something like that. I okay. think it was something similar to that, I think is what it was. There was something that a family could afford or whatever. All right. You know, and, uh, and they were just used for family machine more than anything else, pulling a little sleigh or something like that. Uh, very cheap, very cheap, and very hard to get parts for, <laughs> other than if you had another machine. <laughs> type deal. So on that note, um, did you have to find work parts? hard to find some parts? Not really. It was, it was pretty good. The hood was damaged, of course. I had to replace the track on it, and uh, I replaced the track with another make of a machine track that was the same size. Okay. It was out of an Eskimo snowmobile. Okay. And, uh, and I, I didn't replace it to use, I just replaced it to have a track on it for, for looks and more. Than, you know, sure. I wasn't too worried, but it fit perfect, it fit perfect, and, and it uh, runs perfect too that way. Okay. Yeah. Mm. It, uh, like I said, it was, uh, there was a ski hole, somebody had ran into it with another snowmobile and put a big hole in the hood and everything, it had to be repaired. The seat is original and everything, but it was rusted up really bad, it had to be completely sandblasted and, uh, and uh, painted and everything and all that, individually of course, and that sort of thing. So, but uh, it was quite a project. It wasn't a hard project, but it was quite a project or whatever. But, uh, but as far as uh, the different things that were are on it, they were all there and everything. It was complete that way and everything, and that, um, which was a plus. Like some machines, you have to take a long time to track down some parts and everything. And this one, this one, I didn't have to do that. So, what would you say are some of the more unique features about this machine? Uh, there's not much different. It looks something to, similar to the older Skidoo's and everything, but the spring system on it's a little different and things like that. The, the bogey system on it is, a, is like a Skidoo bogey's wheel. Obviously, some of it's been copied, you know, like, yeah. like the toolbox is similar to a Skidoo toolbox type deal, you know, it, it opens to something similar to that. It has a spring on it, of course, and that and everything, but it, it's, just a, it's similar, you know, and a, it has a Sax engine in it, which you could find stuff for if you had to. Sure. Uh, I haven't had it started and running. I think it will start and run, but I just didn't. Uh, it wasn't, it you want to keep it just for show? Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Was, yeah, yeah. It, uh, I think it would be fun to ride. I think it would be fun to ride, but. Uh, well, it's definitely a unique and beautiful machine, Ron. Thank yeah. you for sharing with okay, us. Okay, thank you. This fucking thing is gross, it's hard to load, it's, like, well, it's got those fucking stupid grouser bars on there so you can't get it up, so I put fucking studs on it while it rips Richard's fucking trailer up so he gets mangry at me, <laughs> which I don't blame him. Sure. Oh, that fucking Husky Mobile, though, that is, it's, it's the coolest fucking sled.